Hello everyone and welcome to this Sea Science series where we'll go on an epic journey discovering the science of the sea with Ireland's Marine Institute. And on our amazing adventure we'll explore our amazing ocean and find out how awesome, important and essential the ocean is for life on Earth. And learn about how the Marine Institute and its partners work to understand and observe the ocean. Now, we'll be doing some simple demonstrations that you can try and then some not so simple ones that you shouldn't try yourself and we'll get to those when they come up. So let's dive right in. And yes, there will be a number of awful ocean related jokes throughout this series. We'll be joined by lots of celebrity guests like Quack Nicholson. All right. Quacker and Zeta Jones. Hi everyone, let me tell you a story about the ocean. Not now Quacker and just trying to tell everyone what's up. And last but not least, Duck Norris. And Saoirse the Human. Hi, Mark. Sup, Saoirse. Sup, Sea Science Series Saoirse. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice to be here. <laughs> How much sea science will Saoirse see at the Sea Science Series show? How much wood would Duck Norris chuck if Duck Norris could chuck wood? Oh, yeah. that's, that's pretty good. Thank you. I've been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we dive right into this? Oh, I said that already. What? Yeah. We're going to have to think of different material. The ocean is essential for life on Earth. Without it, our planet would be uninhabitable for humans, animals and plants. The ocean covers 70% of the planet's surface and 97% of the Earth's water is found in the ocean. Ooh, and there's one global ocean which is divided into five interconnected regions. The Atlantic Ocean. Pacific Ocean. The Indian Ocean. Arctic Ocean. The Southern or Antarctic Ocean. And even though they're referred to as individual oceans, they're all connected. And because of that, all the ecosystems and all the animals are connected to one another and dependent on one another too. And our health is dependent on them as well. Let's discover some of the reasons the ocean is so important. Okay, uh, did you know over half of the oxygen we breathe is produced in the oceans? The oceans provide us with an important source of food. Hmm, our ocean supports diverse ecosystems and great diversity of marine life. From microscopic plants and animals known as phytoplankton and zooplankton. To the largest animal on earth, the blue whale. Ooh, the ocean is the largest unexplored place on earth. And scientists believe that there are still millions of marine species yet to be discovered. The ocean is responsible for the water cycle and our fresh water supply and drinking water. It's also a source of renewable energy, medicines and provides a means of transport and communication. And very importantly, the ocean plays an important role in regulating our climate and weather. Yes, it does. The oceans are so important and we're going to investigate that further by creating a model of the ocean to see how ocean currents form and how they help regulate the Earth's <laughs> temperature. So this is our model of the ocean, a tank full of water that we've placed on top of some blocks so we can place things underneath it. And you'll see that we've labelled one end the equator and the other end the polar ice caps. It's hotter at the equator as it receives more direct sunlight. So in our model we need to make the equator hotter. So to do that we're going to place some plastic cups full of hot water under the equator end of our ocean model. They'll be our heat source to heat up our equatorial waters just like the sun does. Okay, now for our polar ice caps, which could be the Antarctic or the Arctic Ocean. You can choose. So we should make them pretty chilly, so we're going to put some ice cubes in our polar ice caps. We've also dyed them blue so we can see what happens to the cold water. Oh, cool. Nice. So our cold waters will be blue. Let's add some blue food colouring. Mm. And let's add some red food colouring to our warm waters just to help us track and see what happens. Sweet. Let's look at our model ocean, see what happens. The coloured waters are beginning to flow. You can see a pattern forming in our model ocean.
our colder blue water sinks to the bottom of our ocean and is starting to move in the direction of the equator. And the red hotter water is rising to the top and starting to move in the direction of the poles. This is a really easy way to understand how the temperature of the water influences the development of ocean currents. Let me actually put this white background to help us see our hot water becomes less dense than the water around it, so it rises upwards, and the colder waters are more dense, they sink downwards. So we can see as the cold water sinks, it pulls the hot water in to take its place, and the hot water gets pulled across. As the hot water rises, it pulls the cold waters in below it. So we see this circular pattern forming in our ocean. These are ocean currents. This happens on our planet too. The colder, denser water from the Arctic and the Antarctic sinks and moves along the bottom of the ocean towards the equator where the warm water is. And the warmer water from the equator rises and moves towards the poles where the water is cold, where it will sink and flow back again. These movements are called currents. Because of these currents, the cold waters and the warm waters of the world's ocean are constantly moving and changing places. This circular motion of currents in the ocean is called thermohaline circulation which happens in the deep layers of the ocean. Deep water currents make up 90% of the world's oceans. And the main driver for these deep currents is the differences in water density, which is caused by temperature, as we've seen, and salinity, which is how salty the water is, which we'll see in our next episode. Ocean currents are driven by a range of sources, and we get surface currents too. Mm -hmm. These are caused by winds and because our Earth is rotating. This whole movement of the Earth's oceans, surface currents and the deep water currents is called the global conveyor belt. A huge winding current moving all around the globe, warming, cooling, warming, cooling, winding all around the planet. It moves really slowly and get this, if you were to track one drop of water on its path all around the global conveyor belt, it would take a thousand years to make the full trip. We do not have time for that. That'll have to be a different video. That's a totally different video. Yeah. But that's why our ocean is so important. These currents move warm and cold water around the planet. They help keep our oceans at a stable temperature and help warm and cool the air, helping to control our climate and weather patterns around the world. Ocean currents also benefit all marine species. As water moves from the depths of the ocean to the surface, it carries nutrients that nourish the microorganisms, which form the basis of many ocean food chains. They also provide transport for moving plankton, fish, and chemicals like salt, oxygen, and carbon dioxide around the world. Our oceans are so important, so we must protect and respect them. Human-made impacts are changing ocean conditions, which affects our climate and weather systems, harms many species, and impacts human health. The Marine Institute and its national and international partners work to observe and understand how our ocean is changing and analyze and project the impact of this to create ways to safeguard our ocean. We'll discover some of the platforms that the Marine Institute use at sea and around Ireland's coast throughout the rest of the series. Pretty cool model ocean. Pretty cool. What yeah. did you guys think of it? Oh, that was just wonderful. That was grand, yeah. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>